Hey, this is Aaron Price, and welcome to another live session. I am so excited to tell you about The Cove. Today we have Nancy J. Kelly. She's president and CEO of Nancy J. Kelly and Associates. She's been hard at work on The Cove. Nancy, so good to be with you today. Good to be with you, Aaron. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. I, so I'm I'm in my home studio in Hoboken, New Jersey. We also have an office in Jersey City. Where are you physically set up at the moment? So I'm in my home studio in Manhattan, Tribeca, actually. So I can actually see you right across the river. Turns out we have the better view on, on this side of the river. Yes, yes, you, you know, do. <laughs> which you are leveraging for the Cove. So tell people about the Cove. What is it and where will it be located? So the Cove is the first of its kind in the greater New York metropolitan area in terms of a ground up live work play development. It's set on about 13 acres of land. It's got about 1.5 million square feet of tech and life science space and about 1.6 million square feet of residential space. And so it really is a campus hub where people can live, they can work, they can play. Uh, and it's part of a larger um, life science and medical corridor that's developing along the Hudson River in Jersey City. I'm super excited about this. Um, we helped to open one of the first co-working spaces in Hoboken. I'm a huge believer in this model around the region. So what differentiates the Cove from some of the other co-working spaces in the region? Well, you can see here, and I've got another shot, which you can see a little bit um, uh, better. He, this is the location of the cove. You can see it in red there, but you can also see it next to um, Liberty State Park and uh, Liberty Science Center, which uh, comprises of a 40 acre science and technology corridor. Edgeworks, which is an innovation center and um, incubator, will be at SciTech City, which is being built by Liberty Science Center. They have a K through 12 STEM school that will be uh, on site so that people who are living in this area will be able to send their kids to school there. There'll be housing both on the SciTech City site as well as the Cove. But you can see uh, in the lower right hand corner there, the juxtaposition of the two sites. And, and this is a 40 acre site and it's just south of um, the New Jersey Medical Center, which is also um, expanding. And so it will really be part of a medical science and tech corridor. So tell me more about that. Why the focus on, why have an industry focus at all? And how did you land on the life sciences focus for this property? Well, you know, I think during the pandemic, everyone understood how important life sciences was to our well being and to our economic, uh, you know, well being as well in terms of jobs and in economic growth. And, um, and New Jersey and New York in particular underwent a transformation in terms of life sciences in, in new investment and new facilities that are being built to house uh, life science um, uses. And Jersey City in particular is developing as a hub for life sciences. Um, you've had a number of companies moving in there in 2019 and 2020, startup companies that are raising lots of money like Claris Biotherapeutics and Evergreen Therapeutics. You had um, Organon, which is a Merck spinoff Fortune 500 company locate there. Um, more recently, um, New Jersey Institute of Technology established their computer, um, graduate computer uh, sector there, as well as Ben Gurion University. So there's a real focus on life sciences in Jersey City. And it's really the nexus between the largest academic medical institutions, which are located in Manhattan, and the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, which are located in New Jersey. And the Cove sits right in the center of all of that. So tell me, how can innovators be integrated into the space? How can they get involved with the Cove? And, and what can they do now versus, you know, as, as it gets uh, built and it comes online? Well, right now they can follow us online. They can sign up on our website for updates as they become available. 
We're in discussions now with several academic anchor tenants, uh, which will provide kind of a mixed research and commercial development, both academic institutions as well as larger mid-size and larger life science tech and life companies. Um, and along the way, I mean, SciTech City will be opening in 2023. Uh, and there will be lots of space for innovators to be involved there. And then when the Cove opens just one or two years later, um, obviously there'll be a lot more expanded activity uh, on that campus. And there'll be all kinds of spaces um, for innovators like this one or full labs that are overlooking uh, the Hudson River. It will be a very exciting place um, to work. I mean, it looks incredible. Um, I've often heard the tech community talk about the the need for wet lab space, and we just saw a rendering that included some of that kind of of space. Can you share more about the what will be integrated into the facility itself? So you know, life sciences is really a continuum which um, spans from academic research, which is very lab oriented, all the way to bioinformatics and data storage and digital health, which is very tech oriented. Um, and so there'll be kinds of spaces that can accommodate all of those kinds of uses, as well as, you know, um, the uses that are looking forward into the future. Um, technologies that are going to address climate change, fintech, all of those kinds of, of tech-oriented uses that we see really hot today in, in growing markets. Yeah. What about the size of the companies that you'd like to see represented in the space over time? Well, we anticipate that there will be incubator space there eventually. Um, we're looking for larger tenants uh, in terms of anchoring the development, but eventually we will have space for startup companies, mid-sized companies, meaning 25 to 50,000 square feet, large pharma companies that want to be collaborating with the core facilities that will be located on the campus. It will really be a good mix of uses to attract all kinds of companies. And so have you found that the Jersey City community has been receptive and eager to, to welcome this space? Absolutely. I mean, it's really been uh, so exciting to me uh, as someone who's worked a lot in New York City to see how Jersey City has really welcomed this development with open arms. We had the Cove launch event at the end of September, and that is on our website, all of the videos associated with the launch event so people can watch. Um, and the governor's office was there. The mayor opened the meeting. You know, um, there was just so much support. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think there's, there's such an opportunity in New Jersey for these kinds of spaces. You know, obviously, you mentioned you're in New York right now. You know, what have you learned about the New Jersey community here in putting this space together, and how much excitement and pent up energy there is for this kind of a of a project? Well, you know, New Jersey has the largest um, tech and life science workforce in the world. And those, um, those people want to, you know, enjoy the waterfront uh, near Manhattan, but don't necessarily want to commute into Manhattan to go to work. And that's why having Jersey City as a gateway community between the two areas is so important because it allows people to work where they want to work and live where they want to live. Yeah, we talk a lot about the incredible talent that we have around the state, the incredible industry strengths we have, life sciences being key among them. Um, for those who want to be supportive, maybe who are, are not necessarily sure that they want to take space there just yet, or they're interested in learning more about that, what more can the community do right now to be supportive of the Cove uh, right now? Well, I mean, I think by, you know, getting involved with organizations like yours, uh, you're at, in Jersey City right now, raising the level of activity that's going on there in terms of community meetings, really uh, helping to make it a hotbed of tech and life science activity that's not only um, situated inside of the companies, but that also brings 
adds to the community as well. So what are some of the, you know, what are some of the challenges that come up? I mean, this is a, an ambitious effort. It's a beautiful looking space. What are some of the challenges that come up in trying to bring something like this online? And, and is there an opportunity, you know, as the leader of Tech United New Jersey, we want to make sure that we're, we're creating an environment that's welcoming to these kinds of projects. Do you have any feedback on what more we could be doing in the region to make sure that we're, we're doing our best to enable these kinds of projects to happen? Well, you know, um, there's a lot of work that's gone into this development so far. This development actually sits on a brown on a former Brownsfield site um, because, of course, the area was all overlaid with train tracks. Once upon a time, people came into Ellis Island, they got dropped off at the train station, and their next stop was uh, mid USA somewhere. Um, and and so there was a lot of of chemicals that was on the site that had to be cleaned up. Um, so, you know, there's been five or six years of cleanup. Um, that has been completed now, uh, very complicated. Um, and the, the parcels have been assembled. This 13 acre site didn't just exist. They had to be assembled by the developer, Argent Ventures. Uh, over time, they had to be permitted as part of a science and technology corridor by the city. And so developments of this size and magnitude don't just happen overnight. They have to be planned for, investment has to be made. And of course, having the, um, the atmosphere and the support that is conducive uh, to allowing that investment to be made is really the key. Yeah, I mean, the, the space really does look incredible. I agree with you on the opportunity in this region. Um, do you feel like, you know, I, I, I felt like the governor's, you know, political views aside, you know, the governor talks a lot about being the state of innovation and wanting to make sure that we are attracting these kinds of projects. Did you feel like you got the kind of support from the state that you were hoping for? Well, you know, I mean, the state has a number of different incentive programs uh, for projects like this right now that was passed in 2020, which we're really excited about and plan to apply for some of them. Um, the governor's been very encouraging, uh, helping to kind of introduce uh, the project to a number of prospective tenants, um, both in in, you know, outside of New, New Jersey and overseas, which has been terrific. Um, and obviously, you know, having the governor's office at our launch event and having the governor in our initial press release around the, um, the launch of the Cove was really important and shows the commitment of the state. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of innovation hubs that are growing up throughout the state of New Jersey and the governor's being supportive of all of them. Um, but I think that uh, we're very happy with the attention we've gotten so far. You know, you, you bring up an interesting point about like there are a lot of innovation hubs happening. I think it's happening around the country. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's I think, more and more challenging to differentiate um, in, the, in the space and what is really an innovation hub versus, you know, what is just another real estate project that they're calling an innovation hub. And so as you, you know, you thought about this project, you, from my point of view, it, it, innovation seems to be very uh, close to, to the, the efforts here. But how have you, you know, you talked about this a little bit earlier on, but you, how have you leaned into making sure that this, this, this project really stands out as a place that attracts innovators and, uh, and, and is sustainable for the long haul in that way? Well, you know, um, the Cove launch event, basically uh, the content of it was basically the innovation center for the 21st century. And we highlighted how we had designed the cove based on six pillars of transformation. The first obviously is economic growth. So focusing on tech and life sciences and the future, which is what we wanted to do. Um, the second was environmental sustainability and really designing this site so that it brings the outdoors in and the indoors out, lots of open space. You can see that we created kind of a pond there in the center of the site, which connects up to Liberty State Park. And there's walking trails throughout the site, which also connects to the park, unprecedented recreational opportunities. Uh, there is the also the opportunity to create the first net um, zero carbon 
uh, development for life sciences on the East Coast, which is pretty spectacular. Um, our training programs that we have planned are really all around social diversity and making sure that there's equity in terms of who is being trained for these jobs and who gets them. Um, and then design for innovation, which is really all about making sure that there's lots of event space, there's lots of programming that's interesting to the community that will draw people into the hub and want, make them want to stay there and work together. Perhaps even our future offices or some of our own events will host. Absolutely. We would love for you to be there. We're, yeah. we're, I'm hoping we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, has the pandemic changed, you know, either the timeline or the design as people talk about, you know, quite a bit about the future of work and the spaces that are, that are being modified or built. Has that changed the, the plan at all? No, I don't think so. But I, I do think it's reinforced our six pillars of transformation because, um, if anything, you know, uh, it showed that science doesn't close down when something like the pandemic happens. Scientists need to be in their labs working. They need to be living close by where they can walk to work um, so that they can get there. But at the same time, they need to be in an, an environmentally friendly uh, place where, you know, there's open space and parks available where if they should have to, um, you know, segregate themselves for whatever reason uh there's places outside where they can go and where they can you know see other people and be with each other so i think if anything it reinforced that we were on the right track in terms of focusing on those pillars of innovation and you know New jersey city you know hoboken also i believe kind of have this interesting connectivity to new york city so how do you think about you, you mentioned this a little bit earlier in some of your comments but how do you think about how New York and New York companies, New York talent play a role in this space? Well, I, in two ways, really. I mean, you can get the ferry from Battery Park City and be, you know, to um, the, the site in eight minutes, essentially. So it's very, very close. You can also take the path and be at the World Trade Center, which leads anywhere in Manhattan. Uh, you know, within 20 minutes. So it's very, very accessible. And so for those companies that want the, that want the proximity of an urban environment like Manhattan, but also want to enjoy kind of, you know, the more park-like and suburban atmosphere of Jersey City and Liberty Science Park um, and Liberty uh, park in general, I think we'll find a welcome home at the Cove. How symbiotic is it with, you know, SciTech City is another very ambitious product. I'm really excited about that as well. How, how symbiotic is this, is the Cove with SciTech City? Absolutely symbiotic. I mean, SciTech City will be coming on before the first building of the Cove comes on, which is great because that is uh, Edgeworks is, you know, an incubation uh, center, which is for small companies working on the most advanced technologies. And as those companies grow and develop, they are going to need expansion space. And the Cove is a perfect opportunity for them, which is right next door. It makes a lot of sense. And I, uh, to reiterate, I, I, I think you mentioned this, but there is a residential component to this as well, correct? Absolutely. So um, there will be housing uh, at SciTech City for innovators who want to live on the site. And, um, and, and we think that that's only going to be supportive of what we're trying to do. Is there any residential space at the Cove? Absolutely. It's 1.6 million square feet and the residential tower is actually in schematic design right now. When you think about, you know, we talked a bit about this at that at your, your launch event, but when you think about how do you bring in the community and make it a welcoming place for innovation from entrepreneurs, you know, solo entrepreneurs all the way to, you know, large scale enterprise companies that want to drive innovation. How do you think about making this an attractive space that becomes a magnet for that kind of activity? Well, I think we make it a place where people want to socialize and and work, right? 
we make it easy for them to do that. So it's connected to all the major transportation hubs. We basically uh, create programming that people want to participate in, programs that help people learn what they need to know in order to develop their technologies and grow their companies. Um, make them excited. So, you know, bring the arts on campus as well as just, you know, your pure kind of scientific programming um, in a way that makes, gives people awe-inspiring experiences. Uh, all of that will be important to making this a really great, fun place. One might think if there were a large like innovation festival that could be housed there, it could be an interesting place to do a thing like that. Oh my goodness, who would think of that? <laughs> who, who might think of a thing like that? Right, um, we'd be well, perfect for that. I think it could be, a, it's absolutely a great space for tech and programming and Propelify and, and I think a lot of the things that the region needs to, to really sh sh to shine. What, for you personally, like what's been the most interesting part? I know, you know, I know these projects take many years and a huge amount of dedication what for you has been sort of the most inspiring part or, or eye-opening part of this experience? Well, really for me, I mean, I've been working in life science real estate for almost 20 years in New York right now. Um, you know, I was worked on the Alexander Life Sciences Center, which was the East River Science Park when I did it. That was an urban science park and the first speculative life science park in uh, New York. And what I love about the Cove is the ground up development on an expansive parcel of land, 13 acres, right on the water, which doesn't exist in the greater New York metropolitan area. It's kind of like Cambridge and San Francisco. Um, it's a very unique site and to see it come alive uh, through the campus design um, that Argent, you know, has envisioned has just been so exciting. Yeah, you know, we love ambitious uh, founders, entities. You know, we, we really embrace the idea of when people say no, that's really an opportunity to, to prove them, maybe to prove them wrong or just to, to, we talk about finding a path through where others see a wall. And this seems to be that kind of a project where I, I could imagine there were several naysayers to see this coming to life is, uh, I'm sure, a very, a very proud moment, uh, not just for you and for Argent, but I think it's a great thing for the region. I'm excited to be there when it comes online. I'm excited to have you here across the river. Have you thought about maybe you should reconsider this? this New York City address and maybe come to the dark side that is New Jersey? <laughs> well, that's definitely a possibility, you know? I mean, I hear I, there's some new residential real estate coming online. That well, I have in. thought about it. Yeah, it's not so bad over here. He's coming hang out. In New York moved to Jersey City during the pandemic. That's right, a lot yeah. of them. So anyway, congratulations on, on this project. I'm really excited to, uh, to see it continue to grow. For those who are interested in learning more, make sure you check out The Cove. And uh, Nancy, I, I also appreciate your, your involvement in Argent support of the Propelify Innovation Festival and look forward to doing uh, lots more with our with our organization. So we'd like to end with a high five since you know, normally we do that in person. So we're gonna do like the high five your camera on the count of three, one, two, three, boom. Hey. Good to see you. Well, I'm waving to you across the river your way over there, but nice to see you and, and congrats again. People check out thecovejc.com to learn more. Thanks so Take much, care. Aaron. Thank really you. appreciate it. Absolutely.